Baby. Only <laughs> one good ass chip. Oh, we started already. <laughs> That's Hello. fabulous. Hello, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. Todd. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. Sorry. Oh, I gave away our guest. <laughs> Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram users. This is FOB Fuego here with some very special guests here at the Casino Household. I am here with Naughty Monkey. What's up, guys? And White Supremacist Todd. What's up? It's been a while since I've seen these guys. Uh, literally last year. Last year. We haven't met up since the year passed. Don't be smart. It was only December. In January, guys. That was like 12 days ago. Um, the last time Todd was here was for the Capcom Cup. Mm -hmm. We were watching the finals. You were here too for the finals. Yeah, yeah. it was good. That I was enjoyed them. That was like, yeah, it was like a month ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot has happened since then. But before we get into that, let's. Uh, how was y'all's end of the year? Because I haven't seen y'all since then. Yeah. It's all right, you know how retail goes. Busy, busy, busy. I'm still alive. Work tried to kill me. Mm, yeah, they failed. failed. Mm, they failed. Yeah, work out. Ah, all right, so we got chips and dip. We eat chips and dip, and uh, <laughs> drinking some beer. Well, they're drinking beer, water, and soda. Not all together. We're also here. We have Julian here, but he's asleep in the other room. So he's a little exhausted. You, you know. can see the Z's up above the head over here. Actually, there's going to be the picture of our uh, podcast. Oh, that's great. Did you didn't sleep. Mm -hmm. I think that pulls path down a little bit. It'll be like if you got drunk. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But anyway. I'd, cuddle, got, I'd go cuddle with him, but I'm, <laughs> I'm scared. No, he won't hit you. He, he get high. He got high in the That's not what I'm scared of. <laughs> <laughs> You're afraid he might not let go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we decided to do a little podcast. Uh, we had uh, people are here right now. Um, we had some games, mostly Street Fighter Five. Um, I had two sick failures, <laughs> and uh, but other than that, uh, Todd has been progressing, which I will say he's been doing some work. Mm -hmm. With the help of Naughty Monkey and Caleb, yeah, trying uh, here. Yeah, I've been yep. watching. I've been watching in the chat. Y'all yeah, been helping him out whenever he'll get online. I can tell when he gets frustrated too. He's yeah. like, "You're just, I'm just a punching bag." I was like, "Hold on, hold on." When I saw yeah, that, like, <laughs> when I saw that in the chat, I was like, "Oh, Todd, <laughs> Let, Todd's letting his emotions get there." The you go. Better. Now, now it's time to learn. Now it's time to learn because <laughs> you want to get better. Yeah, that's unfortunately it took. It has it has to take you to get upset. That's true. To the point to where you actually had to say something. At least at least you're not some kid at the arcade just chunking in quarters, getting his ass handed to him, just spending his mom's purse money. But, in, but then again, I think you might have learned quicker if you did that. Yeah, because money, money was on the line. <laughs> <laughs> and then by then your mom would be like, "You're gonna learn." <laughs> your mom's cool. Really cool. How is she? How, how, how's your mom? Doing good. She says hi, by the way. Oh, pleasure. Pleasure. Like, she'd be at your uh, party? Um, I don't know yet. I don't know if they're going to go off and do something on their own that night or. Uh, we're, we're talking about an orgy at Todd's <laughs> um, for your birthday. Few people take advantage of all my services. Yeah. And uh, Tony offers many. <laughs> Very affordable prices, too. He has a payment plan and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta make that money somehow. Yep. All right. So the point of this podcast is basically just we're shooting from the hip here. Like, nothing really planned. We're ready to talk about some things that's going on. New characters came out since then. New games have been coming out since then and been announced. Old games that you fell in love with. Old games that, that I... Oh, yeah. Old games that I fell in love with. Uh, after it was the Capcom Cup day, right? The last mm -hmm. time we played it. No, you were here after that. I think I was here once after that. You're, yeah, you were one before the year was over. <laughs> yeah. We, it, yeah. It was it was after I gave him the uh, Mortal Kombat stick for his birthday. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We really all cool. came up where someone was real. Actually, I kind of love that stick. Oh, yeah, stop about the stick. Yeah, oh, man. Old school Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat style with the uh, original 
five button layout. Five button, a six button layout, but it's five buttons and then one run button, like way low. I, I, just, I love it. I love that. So, those don't understand what it looks like, think of it as a dice, but if you look at the number five, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what it looks like, and then on the bottom left corner is the run or the right bottom. Button? Bottom, yeah, left. bottom left. Bottom left, yeah. yeah. Bottom left corner is the run button. God, I love that stick. I love the buttons, the joystick, everything. It's great. Now we were when we when he got the stick, we were like, you got it, you got to try it out, and then he brought it over to my house after during the Capcom Cup, and we were like, I'm gonna, you want to play some more Combat Three? We we're like, yeah, sure. So we started playing. And then I always wanted to learn Mortal Kombat 3. But you, your game is Mortal Kombat 2. Oh, I love number 2. And to be fair, I've never played Mortal Kombat 2 to this day. Never. I've only played 1 and 3. I missed out on 2. I thought you played 2, though. No. When he had his PS3 here. Nope. My favorite thing was the uh, the art transition from one to two. Like I love number two's art style. The chips. I love number two's art style. I don't really like number three's art style that much. Um, it seems darker. It feels more depressed, depressing in three. I get that vibe. Number two seemed more depressing. Number three just seemed goofy. I thought number two. <laughs> I thought number two was more violent. Number two is very yeah. They upped the violence in number two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they upped it again in number three, but it looked, to me, number three looked more cartoony. And some things were pretty funny. Yeah. It, it, it was purposely, it looked like it was purposely meant to be funny, but I, I still enjoy the games. They're, they're, they're fantastic. And, and speaking of those three games, um, the uh, people that made the one-up arcade machines for Street Fighter, uh-huh. they are going to be, they revealed plans for Mortal Kombat. Oh. Arcade cabinet. Which one? Like, one, two, and three. We gotta get that. I don't have it. If they have it in the same layout, I'm gonna fucking get it. I think it's one, two, and. Yeah, one, it's gonna be the original three. layout. Oh. Um, that's how they're gonna put it up. I think it's Ultimate 3. I think it's gonna be good. Because, oh yeah, going back to 3, um, I never. I always wanted to learn how to do the run combos. And I'm like. And I'm like, I wonder how to do it. I wonder how to do it. And then. And he's like, you gotta push run, and then you hold it, and you do this and that, and then. Each hit is each individual button that you're pressing. So you're, so like the first time I landed, like almost the ender, I saw, like saw the delivery 20, he's like, okay, you're there. You just gotta hit one more button and then you get the full combo. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as I hit that last combo, that last hit for that combo, oh my God. (laughs) I fell in love with that game so good. You know, it's funny though, it's like, um, the real damage of that game is not the run combos. It's it's uh, the juggles, the crazy juggles when you have them in the air and you're juggling them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it's like jab, jump up, kick. Uh, there are infinites, eh? Right? Yeah, like, almost every character has infinites, and they're just ridiculous. Throw loops, like you can't even recover from. There, but, the, we were... We were talking about it earlier. I think you were mentioning it, Todd. That there was gonna be like a like an animated movie. Yeah, I guess there's. I read that there's supposed to be a Mortal Kombat animated movie. Um, Julian said they're actually in. I think they're in the planning stages. I think that's what Julian said. So hopefully this turns out to be true. Instead, I hope it's Warner Brothers. That does it because they've been doing a real good job on the DC animated movies. Mm-hmm. And the new Mortal Kombat game comes out in what April? Dude, when you posted that, yeah, the cover art that was sweet. Oh my god, that yeah, the Scorpion's cover the, art looks the, great. The color, I like not the fact that they're Scorpion, but they use the color so well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like like I, I want them to do different colors. I want them to do a green one for a Reptile or a red one for my Aramac, a blue one for Sub Zero. Like I would love for that to happen, but I doubt it's yeah, I don't know. It might. It would be. It would be. It looks nice. sick. It it might if like you got like the Best Buy pre order, the GameStop pre order, and mm-hmm. whatever. But it is a possibility. But, yeah. but the Scorp- the Scorpion one on its own looks sick. That like what? And it's only a character, so they show the whole roster. But just to be fair, just for having one character on the screen. 
or on the cover. On the cover, mm-hmm. at least. It looked badass. Like I, when I first saw it, I fell in love with the whole thing. I was like, oh my god, yeah. it looks so good. Because the trailer got two characters: got Scorpion and Raiden on it. And then, of course, the old school Scorpion come up from World. I just Kombat. can't. I just can't wait for the roster reveal. I want to see who's going to be in it. What the DLC characters are going to be. I've been. I've been hearing that Sub Zero might not be in this one. I already heard that Johnny Cage and Goro are not going to be in this one. But I, I mean, I, I'm a Goro fan. I, like, I, I love know, Goro, and, and I know Shao Kahn's pre-order. Yeah, like I know he looks, that the design that they gave him. He looks brutal. Mm-hmm. And there's also I read this I think yesterday or I think it was yesterday after I came in from work. Where did you read it from? Where are your sources, Todd? Um, yeah, I leave, don't remember the leave, leave the, the exact the sources, sources. <laughs> but they're actually talking about. Um, Ronda Rousey being the model for Cassie Cage. Oh. For MK11. That'd be cool. That actually, that would have, there was a time that she wasn't there. Probably this happened between like possibly like the transition. Because there was a time where she was transitioning over from UFC to WWE. Mm-hmm. The man just a deal was they got her while she was still in the UFC. They're like, yeah, okay, you can be a model for it. But she's actually pretty, not bad. Um, so that's in the works already. Actually, that's been in the works. They just stayed super mm-hmm. quiet about it. Oh yeah. Um, now the realms usually pretty good about staying quiet about geez. stuff until they're absolutely ready to reveal it. Okay, and then from there, oh, we played that, and then oh, I think maybe it was like a week or two weeks later. It was whenever I brought tournament fighters over. That was another time I yeah. came over. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. God, that lovely game. You 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 brought. The gift that Henry got you. Actually, shout out to Henry. You brought the gift that he gave you. Hadn't opened it up yet. We broke it in that day. And you brought Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighter. We hooked it up to the HDTV. Nice. And we fought, and we finally got... We, Tony and I, he knows I like Tournament Fighter. Like Tournament Fighter. We never fought each other. Anymore. Yeah, we just kicked each other's ass oh, for like... Oh, man. <laughs> for- Some of the stupidest things. Like that dive thing that the shark had. He would go super deep, and you just about to think you're about to beat him or like try to like attack him on the way down. He still hits you when he's right under you, going on the other side. You're like, oh, it's a cross up, but from the bottom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, it's so bad. It, we, were, we were doing like doing throws, and we were doing all this shit. And I, like the little things that I like about the game is like the way they perform throws, like the suplexes, like. When the screen shakes, mm-hmm. I love that. It shows like how hard it's the ground, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh, that, that always gets me." But that actually got me thinking too. Once, once we had your console, it was like you could actually stream that now. Was got you some like like a capture card? So maybe we, maybe we try to get that working for you. Heck yeah, that'd be fun. I would love to do that. Trying to fight your champ. Yeah, and then have the first play, and then just <laughs> oh, have everybody else play it. I remember him teaching me tournament fighters at U of H. After ban wingnut. Raphael, <laughs> please. Just All dive kicks. Me. Yeah, I was showing Todd, and Todd fun. was getting it, man. He it started. Was, it, it was, was fun. He was taking some matches off of me, and I was just like, "All right, man, you need to slow down." Like, I'm, like. <laughs> it, was, it was. It was fun. It was a Mortal Kombat three situation with me too. <laughs> yeah, you hit these buttons, and I hit him. Like, okay, Oscar, you need to chill. All right, man. I, I, like, I, no, it's not I, fair. I'm the. I, I know this game, not you. Yeah. I, I actually really wouldn't mind if they actually like did a new tournament fighters game. Yeah, that would be that would be neat. They're always long overdue for that. But who oh, would, yeah. uh, I would, it's kind of one of those things where, like, if they make it now, they really can't make a good one. To be honest with you, because they're going to critique the fuck out of it. Mm-hmm. But um, speaking of new games, there's a new one's coming out. I, I'm, I'm not sure if this is already out yet. Did Dead or Alive already come out? No, no. it's um, February 15th. 15th. Okay. The OA6. I've seen footage and of right now. that game looks beautiful. Mm-hmm. Is there a beta out right now? I don't know. I think there are. I think there's an alpha or a beta test out at the moment. Because I've seen people post footage of it already. Mm-hmm. But the particle effects in the movie, like when stages just get torn up, because one of the best things that that game has that I love is the stage transitions. Oh, those are oh, so yes. over the top. But love. on the older games... Like it was just knocking somebody off a cliff or knocking someone through a window, but now it's like you lock, knock someone off a ledge or off of a fence, yeah, and a it just <laughs> it 
you know, the, the fencing or whatever is you get knocked into just obliterates and there's just fragments flying everywhere mm-hmm. and it's so dramatic looking and I, I love it. Well, the first time I saw the previews and, of it, I was, I was, and, I was stunned. And, and the fact is they, they actually, there's people that want them to cut back on the sexual content of that game. And they did, didn't they? They did for a short while. I think while, that this they... game, they're going to calm it down a little bit. But they... I think I read recently <laughs> they just changed their mind. I said, fuck it. You know, we're still well, going to have the jiggles. We're still going to have think, all that stuff. I think the issue was is that there were, there's a modding community that got a hold of it once they got on Steam. And they, as soon as they went on Steam, to be, you know, a little bit PG about it, the layers came off. Yeah. There's... And then it immediately <laughs> it happened so fast. I bet you Todd has done that already. No. No? I, I don't know how to mod games, so... So he says. So he says. <laughs> so he says. Oh, trust me. If I follow, knew, him, follow him on Pornhub. And, and if I knew how to mod games, I would have had a Batman Return of the Joker mod DLC on... Why would you want to see them naked? Naked? Why do I see them naked? No, I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> A Batman, little winter flying around everywhere. So what are you doing with the VR, Todd? <laughs> Hands out. Actually, actually don't have the VR yet. Did you see videos of that? Yeah. God, that's terrible. Oh, man. These, my, poor, these poor lonely fools. I got, I got, a, I got a little story. Um, we're going further. Uh, my grandma, we took my grandma to go see The Amazing Spider-Man, mm-hmm. the first one. And uh, it's on in 3D. And then they're like, oh yeah, you know, she, 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 she like, I like the effect when they shoot the web and the, the web's actually coming at you, you know, she's, and she would reach for it. It's like, oh, that's cool. Mm-hmm. She, she gets in, she gets, I want to say, invested in it. Hmm. So. She gets submerged in they, the environment. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. So she, she, she's a very cool person to watch the movie with because she'll put, you're like, I'm there. So as we're leaving, it was around the time where Magic Mike was being released by the theater. And it hasn't come out yet, I think. And then uh, my mom told my wife, hey, you want to go see Magic Mike? My wife goes, yeah, yeah, let's go watch it. And my grandma goes, can we see it in 3D? And then I'm going to be like, grandma, no. And then she goes, I want to do this. Just have her hands out. And then she squeezes them. That's great. She's squeezing into the pecs of the butt, like, no, come on. <laughs> we'll get along just fine. Yeah. She was, she was, like, she's a trip. She's a trip. I love you, Grandma. But, uh, she, she, she'll catch you out of nowhere, because she's, like, very calm and reserved, but then you don't expect it. She'll crack a joke on you, and you're like, whoa, where did this come from? Uh, but, uh, but yeah, like like I remember when EOA five was a was, was actually announced at E three. They didn't show the gameplay trailer. They just show, actually it was a demo, but they were showing like they were fighting like in the junkyard or construction site. I'm not sure. It's probably it was. the construction yeah. site or the oil rig. Because yeah. yeah. there was like oh, parts where right. like where the, the actual machinery was like involved in some way or form. It was the construction site. Then. Yeah, and I was like, fuck, like. You can actually turn that off on stages too. Yeah, so. but yeah. but that's why. why well, I mean, just why? tournament settings. Maybe they might turn that shit that off. Might, that, no, that's like you're muting the fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you're the muting. game, is, the game itself is very very high. I yeah, love yeah. It. I remember when I saw yeah, you. Wait. They I mean, added they added my yeah, from uh, end, yeah. from S and K, and they added um, what was the guy's name from Virtual Fighter? Akira. Yeah. They they added a bunch from Virtual Fighter though. Actually, yeah, there was already that was already a thing, wasn't it? There was like three or four characters from Virtual Fighter in there. Okay, I didn't. Kage's one of them too, right? Kage, like Kage. a ninja. He's a ninja. Blue I, ninja. I don't know. I don't remember. I have to. Or Ryu. Ryu's already in the game. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, speaking of uh, and actually, <clears throat> the fun fact with Mai is, you know how everybody else has a black button. With Mai, they actually programmed her in there where you can actually hold back. The block. Hmm. Yeah. With her. I remember watching you guys play for the pie match. When Todd had challenged Tony to play the game. That was fun. That was, was a good, that was fun. Who streamed it? 
And I'm like, I've never seen the game before. I actually like sat down and watched it until you guys played it. And I was laughing my ass off because you were like, <laughs> you were, because you were beating him up. Oh right? yeah, Tony, was, Tony, was, Tony beat you up, and then I know where Todd will kick you through a door, and you're flying on the steps. You're like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Tell you, me, me, and him had fun before the pie match. We're sitting there, we're passing memes back and pie memes back and forth to each other on Facebook. We're just talking shit to each other. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> I was like, what was, what's the beef between you two? <laughs> that's the thing. It was no uh, beef. We're just no having beef. fun. We're just having fun. Yeah, I get up. That was one of the funnier matches that night. That was more enjoyable. It was more. And enjoyable. the funny thing is, uh, like, I was extremely busy with work and family, and I didn't have time to practice the game. And I was worried. I was. I was worried. I was like, man, he's gonna blow me up when he's, I get over there. I remember that. And he just completely. My, and Tim was like, yeah, I'm gonna fucking do it. My my inexperience with fighting other people and fighting games. So. He would tell me like, I'm practicing. I'm like, oh, I was so practicing much. too. Not well. <laughs> Not well enough, no. Well, what I ended up doing, I ended up using Hayate, which he was exactly the same as DOA 2. And DOA 2, I played a lot of. And that, trans- that transferred over. Really it, it transferred over well. It cha- there were some changes, but. And then Henry jumps on and just obliterates me with, mm-hmm. uh, what was her name? The. the Kickboxer girl? Or? Oh, that, that, that southern chick. Oh, oh Tina? Tina? Bass's daughter, yeah. Tina? It's kind of, it's funny, like, uh, like, I fought Henry in, uh, in the Dark Stalkers tournament. I never it because, you know, not a lot of people were in it. Yeah, we got the man, and I ended up fighting, ended up fighting Andres, the guy that oh. plays the game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Religiously. I'm like, oh, wow. first round, I'm like, oh, I'm fucked. Do you know why he likes that game, though? Why? He loves that game because of uh, the monsters. He was a big fan of the old style monsters, the old style Frankenstein and werewolf and all that stuff, and that's why he likes that game. Mm-hmm. When he saw it in the arcades, he fell in love with it. I was like, "Wow, really?" He's he, like, yeah. Even though it's a parody, they, they yeah, like, they yeah. Like the fact that he just loves it. That's the, and that's cool. And it's yeah, actually that's awesome. That's actually a really good game. Yeah, I mean, it's a fun game. It is a fun game. I mean, I've. I've played it at U of H against Andreas before, and he was teaching me a little bit here and there. It's like Street Fighter Alpha style almost. It's um. It's similar to that, isn't it? Yeah, it, mm-hmm. the, 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 it's the Alpha style sprites, and those sprites transverse into all the other games that they yeah had for forever. I remember uh, when I fought him; he blew me up. I was like. I was like, man, I had to get paired with you. Mm-hmm. And then I got paired with Henry, and Henry's like, showed no mercy to me. <laughs> he turned, uh, he used, uh, who was that? I think it was uh, the mummy. Ta- no, he uses Talbane. He uses the wolf. Well, he turned me into a little little figurine during, during the gameplay. Oh, no. I was using Raptor. I think he was the mummy. Okay. He, did, he did something where he turned me into a little... I was a little head on top of a guitar. <laughs> oh, so he, he, he used... transformed me into that. Yeah. And then uh, it's on screen, actually. You look for it. It's on screen. <laughs> and you can see me going, no, mm-hmm. no, jumping around. <laughs> <laughs> and then everyone's like, oh, get away, get away. I tried. He fucking humiliated me on there. I'm like, all right, motherfucker. I'm going to get you next time. Mm-hmm. There's no mercy in this dojo. No. no. He's not even in the dojo. <laughs> He's not even in the dojo. He's not even in the dojo. Fucking, uh, when I would play him. He's that street. spectator that wants to jump in. Yeah. He, <laughs> what, I wanted, uh, I'll, I'll play him on his streams just to, like, you know, because sometimes it's like a lot of people will be on there at, on, at once. Mm-hmm. And I'll play him in Marvel vs. Capcom, the uh, first one. And he would get mad, dude. Oh. He would get mad. Because mm-hmm. I would, it was the first time I played him. Actually, we were we were even. The second time I played him, I I didn't beat him up bad, but I won every match. Mm-hmm. But I would win in like the mm-hmm. by like mm-hmm. the skin of my teeth. Skin of your teeth, yeah. One of the funniest ones where I kept hitting him the throat loops mm-hmm. in two different sets. Mm-hmm. And he's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> Uh, Henry. My funniest thing of playing uh, Henry in Marvel vs. Capcom 1 was I would always pick uh, Zangief and I'd pick Zangief and Mega Man. That's what I picked too. That is so. <laughs> okay. The the super where 
You could do a double super if you have all the meter and you can it'll grab them and yeah. it'll it'll be both characters will come in and grab mm -hmm. and and do a pile driver. Mm -hmm. But it's funny when you use Mega Man because it looks like Mega Man is just hanging on for the ride. <laughs> you know, you got Zangief just grabbing and jumping in the air and Mega Man's just like on. Mega Man's just hanging on the other side like wee. Yeah. <laughs> I did the I did that using uh, Evil Ryu and uh, I what did I do? I think I caught him in a raging demon. No, I didn't. No. What I did was I uh, I caught him in the level three, mm -hmm. which is the double Larry, uh, the double powerball. Mm -hmm. And he would be like, oh, fuck. <laughs> he, I, I mean, he'll be getting so mad. And then I, I talked to him, it was the last time we met up at U of H. And I asked him, like, hey, man, you, you want to play some more? He was like, man, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think. The first time I ever played against Henry on a stream was actually at Texas Showdown the year before last. They had a guy come in, he hooked up his game system, and me and Henry, for two days, we played one day, then we played again the next. We played Jackie Chan's Fist of Fire. Oh, I heard it. I heard that one so that was That was so much fun. We The first time, the first, like, the first time we played was towards the end of the first day of showdown mm -hmm. so it was just me and him we didn't have very many people around was that when you were playing on on stage we we're playing on oh, stage oh god that was so Aww. funny we we're playing on stage and i then, saw the picture when they said that i was like oh and then the, so the second one the second day we were playing we actually had people behind us sitting there watching us play we had a line of kids behind us they, they, they were running that play. off of a raspberry pi yeah i heard that too. Yeah. and my dorky ass runs up there do you have teenage mutant ninja turtle tournament fighters they're like what's that i'm just like no <laughs> and i tell you Jack, <laughs> jackie chan's fist of fire is such a fun game i He's have to more very mortal combat on oh, crack it was so much fun did you tell his character uh, I played it before with Henry at the old Game Guys location, but I'm like, oh man, I already want that so bad. And I talked to Ruben, and it's like, if you really want to have the ultimate cabinet, you fucking have that game. Mm -hmm. And get it to work. Oh, it was a blast. So, uh, so yeah, we were like, we were back. that was cool that that happened. I remember that. I remember when uh, you went with a luchador mask. Oh, that was so much fun. Would you do that again for this year's showdown? I'll, I actually want to dress up. I, I I was talking to Liz, and I was telling her I want to dress up as a um, Texas, Chan Texas Chainsaw Master Leatherface. Uh -huh. But I just want to walk around with like a mason jar of beef jerky. <laughs> and just, <laughs> just, just look at somebody creepy and just hand them some jerky and have them look at me like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'd be like, no. you are like... And if they say no, you're going to start going crazy and shit? Or yeah, I'll just stare at my roller like, real crazy or something. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> and ask you to leave? <laughs> or, uh, like, if, I get, if, I, if I'm lucky enough to get on stream, just, like, offer him jerky to sit next to me. Mm -hmm. Or pull out some lotion or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you put it on your face, you're, like, just staring into the void. <laughs> Speaking of showdown, weren't you involved in the team tournament this last time? Mm -mm. You were involved in the first one. Man, I've been wanting, I've been selling two showdowns. I've been so mad. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll yeah. do a team tournament if, if, I mean, if they have team tournament and I have enough money to enter in and everything, I'll do it. I'd love to. But like, the first time I did it, I got obliterated. Because I hadn't, I hadn't even played Street Fighter Five yet. Yeah. When they were... And just a bunch of random friends asked me, "Hey, you want to you want to be on my team?" I'm like, dude, I haven't played the game. But they, they're needed, like, but they needed a third person. They needed a third person anyway, so I was. Yeah, they're I like, that. so they're like, come on, come on. And I was like, all right, fine, whatever. And yeah, I got wrecked. It was disgusting. Yeah, I remember that on stream, wasn't it? On 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 stream on on the big screen. Mm -hmm. That was when yeah. Chuck Chun Li was still top tier, yes. like season one, and it was just terrible. Mm -hmm. Who did you fight? Do you remember who you fought? I don't remember who I fought. It was a Chun Li player. I was Laura, mm -hmm. and it was just disgusting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember when I fought in that tournament. I was still using, I was using uh, 
Nikali and Ryu. After that, after that tournament happened, I was like, you know, I need to change it up because I was mm-hmm. not doing good with it. And that's when I learned Bison. It's still strong to this day. Yeah. It's still wrong with him. Mm-hmm. <sighs> that character's too cheap. <laughs> it's harder now because I'm going to my arcade sticks fucking up. <laughs> yeah. That's these Todd's. So I don't know. So I'm not sure if I have to get a new stick or fix some parts that I need, but... Kage is fun though. Well, I speak, yeah, Kage. I've been using Kage for a little bit. Got blown up today by you guys, but at least we got to see a little bit of stuff that I can do with them. Hmm. But, I, uh, I still can't do the uh, cancel the, the, um, the, what is it, the crescent kick into the Raging Demon. Like, I've tried to do it a bunch of times, I can't combo it. Like, the timing is, is real crazy for me. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Cool. And you Think about it like this. Raging Demon's been out for so long, you could never combo it to. Ever. Only in a weird exception where Akuma, which I've done this before and I recorded it, actually threw a fireball at a distance. Actually, it was one of, one of if you, I think it's one of my old Rage Quit videos. Because mm. the person Rage Quit after it happened. <laughs> Apparently, I hit him with a fireball at a far distance, and by the time that it hit, I canceled it to the Raging Demon. Mm. <laughs> As the fireball hit, which I'm not sure if it hit or it just blew up on him, because it happened today. I have to look at it again. But when it either blew up or it hit, he was in his stun long enough to, by the time they recovered, I was on top of him. Mm. And then, when it, and then when it landed, he raced quick <laughs> in the middle of the demon. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's a cool tech. But, I, yeah, but that was the only time I ever landed it like that online. Yeah. I love rage quits now. Like season season one, I would get mad because, yeah, you want the points when you're playing online. Mm-hmm. But now I just take I it as a... I just don't care. Now I just, just love funny. it. I laugh. I point it out to my kids. They laugh too. It's comedic. Do you, do you save the clips on every rage quit? I don't know how. Just hit share, and then say put. It'll trade. It'll track back. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Just make sure in your settings, because sometimes it'll save up to like maybe five minutes. I have mine saved to where it'll save up to an hour. Goodness. Man. It'll save up to an hour. That way, you can go back and that's how I make my pissed off edition videos. Mm-hmm. Like I get a whole bunch of footage and I record it, and as soon as I have the match done, save the clip. Like the clip that I saved with you playing earlier with Julian. Yeah. It didn't save just that match. It saved like a good chunk of them when you were fighting before. Mm-hmm. So it might have caught in the beginning. If we're lucky enough, we might be able to see Todd's. That was fun. This crazy ass run. The, 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 the matches against Julian were fun. It, it took me a little while to get to reading him. And, uh, he kept stuffing him. It's good. He kept stuffing him, and then whenever he actually did do damage to, to Julian, and Julian actually went like. <laughs> yep. He took him lightly, and then after that, he took him serious. Yeah. But this always happens. It's a lot of fun. Oscar's reaction after Julian, when I would charge Julian, try to grab him or try to punch him, Julian jumped. Every time Julian tried to jump in, I just did did Abigail's roll underneath. Yeah, he would do the, the flip kick. As soon as the flip kick would happen, Todd would be rolling underneath it. <laughs> so, so the flip kick's going over and you see Todd flipping the hands <laughs> they cross each other and then Julio will be in the corner and Todd will be out of the corner what you could do is whenever he goes for the flip kick just to parry it yeah mm-hmm. he'll go do the flip kick you parry it and you do the, the rush punches I, I need to practice on on his parry and, yeah and I think training I, I think I've got a couple parries in training mode is a beautiful thing yeah it is a beautiful thing. Like you keep, if you keep practicing that, you'll be able to do a lot of stuff on it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, Tony has to go. I think Todd can stay here a little bit longer. I could probably stay a little bit longer. Yeah, so, uh, bye. By the way, go, guys. Later. See you later. I'm out. See you, brother. All right, you, thank you for coming over. Yep. Keep, talk, keep talking to me. <laughs> it was a pleasure. Thanks for having me over. You're welcome, man. Thank you for coming Tonight's over. Tonight's definitely fun. It's for the chills. Always, always fun coming over to Oscars, playing some more. Yeah, I'm gonna take some water. Yeah, the, the stuff you can learn, and then just 
after he teaches you, he just will just go ahead and humble you mercilessly with bison. So that's how you have to learn. <laughs> There's no mercy. You have to, you have to like. Is that how you got tired of being this a budget man? Our 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 dojo, the global office dojo, is like the Cobra Kai dojo. Oh yes, there there is no mercy. <laughs> like, uh, please join the global office. It's global definitely. underscore office. We are accepting new applicants. Mm, definitely, definitely. We've just broke the ten person threshold. Uh, did we? Right, we did. I think so. I think we're at nine. I think what we're. Do you, what do you say our points? Were like we were like scored a certain amount, amount or something? Yeah, we get them all by us playing together in a group. We get a lot of dojo points. Yeah. And the point of a dojo is like everyone's still playing the game. Everyone's still learning the game. Oh, I didn't ask you. I saw you playing survival. Mm-hmm. How? Which? Which? That, that's not the question I asked you. Like, how far did you go? Like, what level were you on? Uh, well, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to go through all the characters in survival mode, mm-hmm. starting with easy to normal. I'm just trying to get and find money. Yeah. Yeah. Because I just did it. Right. Actually, I, we have 11. 11? I just got, uh, I just passed Extreme on my first try. Oh, nice. So, and I screamed it too, so there's hmm. proof of it. I didn't cheat. How many, uh, how much fight money did you get from it? Uh, it depends on your level. Of the character, really? They used to it used to be fight money rewarded, but since they took that out after season two, yeah, I think it was season two. They uh, what they did was they have it to where they base it off of your experience. So if you have, so say you beat extreme with Kage and you don't use Kage, you get a buttload of money because you leveled up so much in that time. Mm. So, uh, yeah. all right, Ty, you keep talking to them. <laughs> I make sure he gets all this stuff. Right? Oh yeah. So, said so our our dojo is actually doing uh, pretty good right now. We're up to uh, actually we're up to twenty five thousand four hundred fifteen total dojo points, which is awesome. It's pretty cool. Um, as I said, this is the uh, dojo leader speaking. Uh, what premise is taught? And if you want to find me online on Street Fighter Five TKD Kid Twenty Three. Um, go to the dojo, or you can actually go to this CFN dojo, look up global underscore office, and come join us. You know, we got, we have a lot of fun, a ton, a ton of fun in the dojo, we'll for online most, some nights, some of us are even, all of us, or most of us are on, having fun every night. Um, let's see. Trying to think what I'm I'm excited about. I'm excited about the new DOA six definitely. Um it's actually one of my most favorite fighting games. Um Dragon Ball Fighters and Soul Calibur Six are some of my other favorite games so along with Street Fighter Five. Um there's actually a little obscure game that I play every once in a while. Um, I have played it lately called um Shaolin versus Wu Tang, which is pretty cool. So they took all like the movie the martial arts guys and put them into a game, which is very fun. Okay, 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 okay. I'm back. So what's happening? Uh, just talk a while a little bit about the dojo. Some of my favorite games, the little obscure game. I'm a big fan of uh, Shaolin versus Wu Tang. Ah, yes, I remember you talking about that a while back. It's pretty cool. I do need to bring my laptop over one day because I think I do have it on my laptop for us to play. Just all the the movie martial arts guys all in one game. Just a lot of fun. That's cool. Can't wait till you bring it. Well, I also want to talk about another thing, too. Uh, since school started for me, it's been a little bit harder for me to go to these events, especially with my, I have another job for part-time. I barely have enough time to do anything, <clears throat> but um, making videos on YouTube is actually getting to be harder. Making podcasts is possibly the easiest thing for me to do, and even then, I, I can't just do it on my own. Sometimes I need, you know, either you or, mm-hmm. or Donnie Lucky or Julian, but, um, I just want to say I appreciate you guys doing this with me. I appreciate you, you know, 
keeping me sane. Oh yeah. Uh, because uh, this year is kind of like it's not going to be a very productive year as far as gaming for me. Mm-hmm. And it started. It's starting to show in my gameplay. It's starting to show in my equipment. Mm-hmm. My arcade sticks are starting to die on me, and it's not a good sign for me. Yeah. But um, I think it's gonna be a time where I have to put the stick down for a little bit, mm-hmm. and focus on school. Um, I'm still gonna be, you know. Trying to keep my training up as much as I can, as long as my equipment doesn't fail on me. But I'll still be in there in the trenches if you guys have a question mm-hmm. or you need a technique to be analyzed, someone or so forth. Because this year, I chose a crappy year to to do that. <laughs> <laughs> because. First of all, there's new venues that are popping up. There's new, um, there are like new, new venues that are, that are showing up from all over the city of Houston. Uh-huh. Um, esports is starting to become a little bit more of a thing, and Houston is starting to get into that field just a little bit more, you know, slowly but surely. Um, I was offered an esports style position I really can't say who yet but the thing is it might not come to fruition due to the fact that it will require me to you know it will require more of my time and you know Todd like Todd is that time is more precious than, than anything yeah especially at our, at our ages at mm-hmm. the moment but um it's it's a crazy time to be in the fighting game community. Really, it is. Really it crazy. really is. Like around this time last year, I was getting ready to go to Tokyo. A year literally passed. Is like, it's 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 like if you don't see a progression, it's hard to continue to do what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And. You can't get a better con if you can't do good content on your channel, you can't really see it grow. If you can't put in the work, you will not see it grow. So you have to put effort into it. Mm-hmm. The more effort you put into it, the more possible it's gonna be better. But sometimes it doesn't always translate very well. Yeah, like I didn't mean for this to get a little bit real. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're having a good time. All right, but I honestly feel that this year is gonna suck for me game wise, and, and it's hard for me to say that. Like I enjoy it, you know how much I enjoy. Oh it. yeah. Um, you yourself trained with me while you were still learning the game, and mm-hmm. while we were in ITT till. So now I see your progression has gone up a lot oh, higher. Yeah, definitely. So I'm very happy that you're you're putting in the work now because it's starting to show. But as far as me, it's like I believe I'm starting to reach a point to where I will not be able to continue as much mm-hmm. as I could. Yeah. As of now, because it's hard. Oh yeah. It's hard. It's hard to continue something when you don't have the time. And when you do have the time, you have to want to do it. Yeah. Now that you have you gotta, to. You gotta have the passion to do it. And sometimes just stuff comes along just unfortunately takes that away. Mm-hmm. Like, I can say that I've kept up with this game, like Street Fighter Five since it started. And you've seen my progression. You've, mm-hmm. seen, you've seen how well I've been doing. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, it's like, I made a promise that I wanted to keep up with the game as long as it existed. And it'll show how much I've gotten better at it. And it's showing. Like, like I, I'm learning new characters. I'm dealing with the adjustments. We're dealing with the adjustments. Yeah, we're all dealing with the adjustments. All of us at the... You know, those of us that are in the global office so Joe and our friends that are outside. Our little dojo. Yeah, we've been... We've actually been training with one another. We had one, 
maybe two two or three sessions where we actually had a good chunk of us inside the same mm-hmm. same lobby and it was fun. It was fun. A lot of disconnects, but it was fun. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, at the same time, it's like it's like the reality is we. I haven't seen any money from it. You haven't seen any money from it. Mm-hmm. We're just not that good. Yeah, we're just basically we're playing to have fun. You know, we'll we'll enter tournaments just to have fun. Enter last showdown for Dragon Ball Fighters. That was fun. My very first big tournament. Which I wish I should. I wish I would have been there for. Which was a lot of fun. I did. I did all right. Top one hundred. I was probably if I played better, like the first round, I probably would have been a little bit better off. I probably would have gotten into stayed in winners. Did a little better. Maybe even gotten up on stage. That is correct. I have yet to get on stage. Well, actually, I'm like, I've been on stage for a top eight. And that was for Street Fighter 4. It was the last Street Fighter 4 tournament I entered, and I was in Bulma. Mm-hmm. And I got sent to losers by, uh, by Moe. And I was secretly did not want to tell him that I was there because I did not want to fight him. <laughs> I ended up fighting him anyway. But it was my first legit top 8. It was the... It was in, uh, it was in Beaumont. Mm-hmm. Lost, and I was like, okay, you know. Can't get mad at that because yeah. it was, I legit made it there. I got a little nervous because it was my first time on stage like that. And then I'm like, one day I'm going to get back up there and do better. But I haven't been able to have the opportunity to do it. Mm-hmm. Well, not the opportunity. I haven't had a, a chance to go to these events where I can be able to show off what I can do. Yeah. And there, these events happening a little bit too far in between. I did not go 0 and 2 at Evo Japan, which I'm happy about that. Yeah. I won my first set at Evo. That was like my biggest. That if I would have been 0 and 2, I would have been the saltiest plane <laughs> ride home. I would have been sad the rest of the trip. I flew all the way out there just to go 0 and 2. I was balls. But um, I was happy that I did okay enough to where I could say I did not go defeated the whole way. Yeah. It's definitely true with me too. Like the first big tournament there at Showdown. I lost my first match. I'll admit that. But then I did win my second. You know, honestly, I sent a kid home. I mean, I felt kind of bad about that. But you, was, you did. Actually, no, not really. <laughs> not really. Yeah, I learned something. It was great sending somebody home, to be honest with you. I would love to do it again if I could. <laughs> That's the evil Todd talking. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so, your birthday's coming up, right? Yes, my birthday's in a couple weeks. I'm gonna be 37 years old. You don't look 37. That's what I've been told. A lot of people don't believe when I tell them I'm almost 37. They're kind of most of them are kind of shocked. They think I'm still late 20s. Just the beard. The beard and the haircut what it is. I look totally different. I look way younger without the beard. Trust me. Oh, yeah. I think everybody does. Someone said I look like a 12 year old in the right shape. But uh, it was. Uh, what was or, it? or El Chapo. Or El Chapo, yeah. That's why, that's why I had to stop shaving. <laughs> then Border Patrol be all over my eyes. I mean, like, I'm from here. Oh, the, the fun we had with that pie match. I think it was the pie match where I made the flyer review with looking like El Chapo all shaved and the one with yeah, Angel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 that was it. I have to find that image. It's somewhere, I know it's somewhere. Yeah, it's somewhere. So, uh, yeah, that, that's what's going on right now. Like, I, I kind of like, I like the fact that we can still hang out with one another. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, uh, is like it's getting a little bit harder. Oh yeah. Like with the plan ahead, and today was kind of an impromptu one because my brother showed up, and luckily people had enough time to. Yeah. yeah. 
said I'm off tomorrow, so I was able to make it up. Yeah, or off work. tonight, today, actually. I work tomorrow, too, but I don't know what time. Yeah, um, my dad actually bought tickets to uh, a Circus de Leo performance up, mm, up in Tomball, in near Tomball, I think it is. Mm-hmm. So. Nice. Then, then after that, I'm... I'm free the rest of the day. <laughs> what do we do with our lifetime? <laughs> Why do we play these games? We play because... You Morning! Know, Sonic. Because honestly, sometimes we play games... We have various reasons why we play games because we enjoy them. Because we just need something to take our mind off stuff. If we have a bad day, that's where fighting game actually games like fighting games like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat, and then even even the RPG games like the Batman Arkham series are great for actually taking your aggression out on something. So you're not taking out on a person or a wall or hurting yourself. You're just taking out on characters of the game. <laughs> yeah. It's a good stress reliever. Mm-hmm. Especially when you have good friends around you. Mm-hmm. I think that's I think that's what I like about it more. But I remember I got into the community more because of the fact that like Junior was gone. And uh, I had no one to play with. Mm-hmm. That's whenever I helped start the uh, I say help start, but I basically brought everybody together for the Fighters of Baytown. Mm-hmm. Like, the group originally started as an event page, and then it turned itself into an actual group page. So I was one of them, cool. and then, so we've been cool ever since. But uh, it's, it was for that reason, though, that... I started to make new friends. Mm-hmm. He, not, like here in Baytown, also like, you know, Webster where we were in ITT. Oh yeah, that was fun. Um, Pasadena area. I mean, I would never gotten into the, really into the fighting game community if it wasn't for, for Oscar, and I wouldn't have met like Henry and, and Tony yeah. and everybody else. Yeah, we've been, since then we've been kind of close since then. We've been closer now. Like right now, as we speak, a good chunk of those people are over there at the, I believe, Game of Dreams. Game of Dreams, yeah. yeah. There. Where's that? At? That's like up north, isn't I it? I think it's off of 1960, I believe. Um, I know Henry and Tony that was just here. Tony knows a little bit more about the place and mm-hmm. where it is than I am, but I think it's off of up there, off of 1960. And they got actual working cabinets for Third Strike and a couple other games. They're actually hosting a big tournament the 25th of January, which was my original date for my birthday party. But I know how much everybody loves like, Tony and Ned love Third Strike that I actually backed my party up to the 26th so they can go ahead. It's on the Sunday, right? Go to the tournament. Um, the tournament's on a Friday. Oh, the twenty fifth. So your party's gonna be on a Saturday. My party's gonna be on a Saturday. I think that's better. Yeah, it's definitely better. And as I said, it, it gives my friends it gives my friends the opportunity to go play a game that they enjoy competing in the tournament, which they enjoy. Which I do wish all my friends good luck with that coming up here. The for. Friday after next. Yeah, so. I heard the venue was nice. I think, um, I think it's smaller than the Game Guy's Warehouse second floor, if I'm not mistaken. Because I heard it was like a computer. It's literally the same layout as the second floor of Game mm-hmm. Guys. Um, they have, it's mostly computer. They're gonna try and get into the scene where, you know, the Overwatch, Fortnite, and all Fortnite, that, all that. The PC gaming side. PUBG. PUBG, but they have those, they have those four cabinets. Mm-hmm. 
and then uh, and they're in a corner at the moment which people want those cabinets they want to play on those things which is something like which is fine that's their preference and you like I understand why they want to play on those things mm-hmm. because that's like you're playing on original hardware yeah which is understandable and I totally get that definitely and I've always given it crap and it, then I still do every once in a while but the thing is if their goal is to go like this last weekend was Cooperation Cup in Japan mm-hmm. meaning it was like a big like, I think it was like a 5-on-5 five five. I'm not I, I'm not, I don't remember how many people were in the team but everyone was playing third script mm-hmm. and they're in teams yeah and they're playing on cabinets the candy mm-hmm. cabinets and if they want to go over there and actually like to try and win over there or of course they're not going to win you know I'm not saying that they're bad but they're not the level over there in Japan yeah the, the thing is is that they want to at least practice and train like the way they are mm-hmm. which I can respect that yeah definitely I mean none no one's really on the level of the, they're at over in Japan yeah quite honestly so it's a very interesting niche, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but more power to them, you know. I wish yep. them, I wish them the best. Hope they do well, and I think yep. this this year is like a lot of venues are opening up around Texas. I, uh, there's one in the like in a mall somewhere. I don't know if it was Deerberg Mall or Memorial City. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. like a gaming center opened up around that area too, inside the mall. And they're like, this might be an interesting time for a lot of the, for a showdown because there's going to be more representation around yeah. Houston. Like if I were to continue to, um, to practice and train on that, like the venue would want to, want to sponsor me would be Game Guys. Because mm-hmm. they, they actually reached out to me not too long ago. But um, I had to, I had to talk to them and you know in private about what's going on with you know with my life right now at school. So right now I have not really decided, but I think odds are it's not going to be able to happen. Mm-hmm. But um, but then you have Game of Dreams where they're getting like the classic games ready. You have the people that still do Insomnia. They're going to do their other. They're still getting their people for Street Fighter Five and the other games like they're. A lot of people are still getting their their games in. Like as actually today was TGC. It was the last TGC event. Yeah. Um, I was gonna go to that, but then I found out that one of the TOs, um, Joe, mm-hmm. Joe was uh, supposed to run CVS too, but they decided to to cancel that game because not a lot of people registered for it. Yeah. Even though they didn't want to do online on site reg- on site registration. Um, so he's like, yeah, I'm not going to go. Yeah. So they just, we just basically stayed at home and basically had a little, 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 little hangout. So it was nice to, it was nice to do a quick little, you know. Oh yeah. Definitely. Game session. Cause we, we couldn't do it Friday cause the school was closed. Mm-hmm. So this is a good thing. Yep. Um, uh, when is the Super Bowl, man? Um, I think it's going to be. It's a good question. I think it's going to be November or not November, February third. I was gonna say fuck, dude. <laughs> I think it's going to be February third. This is the Super Bowl this year. Um, let me double check and look. Yep, um, February 3rd. February 3rd. Yep, it's actually made me on CBS this year. So we don't have to listen to Joe Buck. Unless, unless he transfers over to CBS. No. Highly doubt it. 20 bucks says that he goes on there. No. See, you don't even bet on it. <laughs> I'm not even betting on it, no. Because it could happen. But, uh, yeah. That's, I remember I was in Tokyo and you were like, 
Still doing the Super Bowl, right? right? You just came back. And I just I came back. And, and you're like, like oh, oh, fuck. I forgot we were doing that. <laughs> so if you didn't, if you already told me, I would probably would never have remembered. But uh, that was one of the funnier ones that we did. That we did the World Series with the Astros and the Dodgers. Which was a lot of fun. Yeah, we haven't been able to do any more of those lately. We've been busy. We've been mm-hmm. busy. Um, is there anything that you're looking forward to this year? Um, anything I'm looking forward to this year? Um, Comic Palooza, me and one of my friends from work were supposed to get together and go to Comic Palooza this year. Um, we're pretty sure that we're going to end up spending the three days up there since the hotel is actually attached to the George R. Brown is pretty cool. Looking forward to that showdown this year. You know, looking forward to being there, hanging out with friends, hopefully compete either in five or soul caliber six. Um this year, mm-hmm. hopefully. So I'm pretty sure I doubt. I mean who knows if DOA six is even gonna be available since it's pretty much two months before or three months before. I think it is, but I think it might be a a side game. It well, it depends. Nice. If they announce like a pro tour event thing, mm-hmm. I think they might put it on the mid stage. Mm-hmm. Just, I think, it, 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 as long as it comes out in time, like two months, that's more than enough time. Mm-hmm. I had to, to play Street Fighter Five Arcade Edition one week after it was went live, and like I didn't even the first time I got to play AE, you know, Arcade Edition was at Evo Japan. Mm-hmm. So that was like one of the scariest things I had to do. Yeah and learn what worked and what did not work and even then and that still ended up biting me in the ass and definitely what i want to try to do for this year's showdown is hopefully maybe talk to them about getting a table set up or something like that so i want to set up my old computer and bring like a microphone and um, a webcam and hopefully set up a stream where maybe i can talk to some of the uh competitors competitors there after they get off their game just chill just talk about how their game went and stuff like that not because i know they're probably not going to be interested in playing games after they just get done in their tournament so hopefully i can get that hopefully i want to try to get that set up there this were, year. there's one person that actually I ended up interviewing and i was not planning on it it was cookie yes i do remember that, that yeah, was i saw cookie, i saw cookie play cbs2 and press the crap out of me because I was like, this person knows how to play. And she's real funny. Oh yeah, Cookie's fun. Yeah, she's real, real cool, so shout out to Cookie. Cookie was fun, it was me and, um, I remember we had this last showdown. It was me, Cookie, Henry, and Laura all pitched into a hotel room mm-hmm. together. And it was a lot of fun. Chillin', I think Cookie actually may have recently, I want to say Cookie may have actually recently won a tournament. I know Cookie made top three for fighting EX Lair on the debut tournament. Um, I think, I want to say that Cookie won, maybe, was either, either won or maybe came in second in Mortal Kombat 2? I want to say, but I'm not totally sure. I'm trying to look for the picture and stuff. I think it was one of the, it was one of the Mortal Kombat games, I believe. Mm-hmm. But as I said, I'm not sure completely off the top of my head. So if I can, maybe if I find it, the cookie's been doing work. Tomorrow, yeah. Cookie's been doing a lot of work. Well, one thing I'm looking forward to is like, yes, there are new, there are new games coming out, but I already want the year to be over. <laughs> <laughs> like, school is a thing for me now. Mm-hmm. As much as I hate to admit it, but I have to focus on it. So, you might see less videos on YouTube. You might see less gameplay or anything like that of the sort. You might see more podcasts other than that, but I think I have to go through this in order for me to, to enjoy it more again. Mm-hmm. 
Because as of right now, my arcade stick going to crap. Lasted a good while. Mm-hmm. Yes, it did. It lasted a good while. I got it before Street Fighter Five was even announced. And it was like, I got it. Like, man, it's one of the few sticks I actually would, like enjoy doing. I'm going to fix it, of course. But as of right now, I need to put it to rest with all my other arcade stuff and mm-hmm. get ready for the year. I already and and it, I already knew this was happening preemptively to the point where I even gave you a stick that I was gonna use. Yeah. It was the T E S plus, plus Shadow Loop stick. It was the Shadow Loop stick, oh man. I would have because I was I was planning on making it to my liking, but I was like, you know what? I hate Todd's fucking stick, but he gave him that one. <laughs> I, I hated that stick that you had. Oh so yeah, I, I know you did. I was like, dude, you gotta you need something a little bit better. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and it has. You've been doing oh, work. Oh, yeah. I've been doing work. You've been doing work with this I've been doing work. The, the, the stick that Oscar gave me kind of made one of our other friends mad, but just a little. Hi, Angel. Hi, Angel. We love you, buddy. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but, uh, but it was because of the fact that I knew it would be in good hands. Mm-hmm. You would, you would actually do well with it. And uh, we've been, you've been practicing like Caleb and nine months lately. Yeah, Connor too, right? Yeah, Connor a little bit. Um, that's a big help. Cinnamuffins. Cinnamuffins, yeah, big help from you know Caleb and uh, Naughty Monkey, of course. Um, Caleb has just been kind of getting on either as Abigail or as other characters that he's actually not completely comfortable with and help me out with my Abigail and I've even been trying to go through the survival modes hard and all that, trying to get better even in through the arcade mode as well. It's uh it's a crazy ass road. It's just the, the training mode, I'm sorry personally, doesn't do anything for me. Well you don't know how to do the settings. Yeah, that's true. I don't know how to do the settings yeah, so that's why I prefer playing against friends or going into like the survival mode, you know, I practice on a lot of the stuff in the survival mode as well. Like what I actually do is I actually uh, do the frame trap setups where I learn what my character can do for the frame traps, mm-hmm. which is very helpful because like, that's how I managed to beat Naughty Monkey or my brother. Um, we didn't get to play tonight, but you, mm-hmm. but you know what I mean, like where you try to hit a button, where I told yeah. you, don't hit a button between button screens, yeah, because then you will get hit. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's like it's very. It's weird going through the whole fact that you know, like, yeah, I learned this stuff and you, you apply it in a match, and when you learn it and then you actually get to do it mm-hmm. in a real life situation, oh, it's fun. It feels good. It does feel good. Definitely. You feel accomplished. Good. You feel. I mean, you feel like your your hard work is starting to pay off. Oh yeah, taking a couple rounds and even a match away from Julian, which I've never been able to beat before personally. And That's a big deal. I've, I've played him a couple of times and he's always. Because of my big inexperience and his, he's got more, way more experience than I do in this game, and he's always pretty much kind of kicking my ass. Yeah. Well, he's so he, he's like me. Like he's played more. He has the idea of what he needs to do in the matches. Mm-hmm. But he's told me that he hasn't had a lot of time to play the game, mm-hmm. like online. So he'd rather be. He'd rather be like with us, with yeah, our right. friends, and like, like, like an way. offline scenario. Offline scenario, which I don't blame him. Yeah, I mean, it shows us how strong he's gotten too, because it's it's not easy to to do a lot of the things that you know mm-hmm. that he, he can do as as that character compared to what you were doing. Like you stuck with it, or he wasn't playing. He was mm-hmm. doing what he's doing, and then you started to actually hang with him. Yeah. And you didn't take a lot of matches, but you took a lot of rounds. Oh, yeah. You made him sweat. Yes, I did. Definitely. Yeah. So that's uh, that's a good thing. That's, that's a that's a good sign to, to show that you... You are the punching bag that punches back. Yes, I'm finally starting to be that person. Yeah, so that's... I'm very happy for you that that's actually working out for you. Mm-hmm. So we're going to go... 
We're going to talk about one last subject before we call it a night. We're going to talk about something that I have been wanting to talk to you about because you will not stop posting about it. And I need to talk to you about it because I was watching it before it was actually a thing. Oh, yeah. During the summer. Yes. So recently on Netflix, there is an anime that was released called High Score Girl. High Score Girl. And just a quick little synopsis, no spoilers. A boy hangs out at the arcade a lot. Really good because he puts in the time. He runs into a rich girl where he notices that she's really good at video games, but she does not talk. But she's really disciplined. Mm -hmm. Come to find out she has a rough upbringing because of the way that they have her at her, at her home. And they grow fond of one another because of the video games. Mm -hmm. Now, I went into this anime because of the video games. By the time I stopped watching it, it was because when I was watching it, it was actually showing in syndication. So it was actually happening. The full season wasn't done yet. Mm -hmm. I made it to where him and the girl were on the train and then they get left behind. Yeah. That was the one. That's like episode what, five or six? One of those two. It's one of those two. The four. I forgot. No, I forgot. It, it, it's further. I think it's a little. Not further. It's not that much further along. It was like halfway. It's about halfway, yeah. So when I got to there, I was like, ah. Oh. Like, I didn't know if they were going to finish it right then and there or it was already done, so I didn't watch it they, anymore. They, yeah. They, so they, they until, what was it? Like a few weeks ago? Yeah, a few weeks ago, I just dumped it on Netflix. And they then, got the full season on Netflix. So we got, I, I highly, highly recommend it. You can jump on. Yep, highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. You know the different. You know they got a like different. The different games. It's basically there's a lot of it takes there, place in ninety one. Yeah, starts out in nineteen ninety one. It, it it takes place at the time of the arcades were actually like big a very interesting big. thing because we were a part of the arcade boom here in the United States. Mm -hmm. A good chunk of it. But we actually get to see it from the other side of the country, how they were doing it over there. Oh, yeah. What it was Japan, like. Yeah. And it's, it's a very interesting, interesting take on it. Like, the like the kid himself is very knowledgeable of a bunch of games. He, he always, nearly every line is dropping a reference towards a game. A game, yeah. Which, like, he knows his stuff. But sometimes they'll throw in little tidbits on how to do certain things. Not a lot of gameplay. Of course, they just show a lot of footage because, you know, they, they're showing off what the arcade was, mm -hmm. the history, like, which I did not know that it got, back then it got so popular, like the arcades, that there was actually classes that on how to play video games. Mm -hmm. That's what threw me off. Yeah. I'm thinking, fuck, if that was like, if that was here, mm -hmm. man, like, and it just happened at a time where people thought like, you cannot make a career out of video games. Yeah. And it's actually starting to where you starting to become viable oh, if yeah. you're well enough. If you're good enough, yeah. Definitely. If you're excellent, yeah, you can make a career out of it. So let me ask you this, Todd. Why do you like that anime? I like the anime because it's, it brings back a lot of nostalgia. Because, of course, I grew up on arcades. I grew up in the arcades. I always, when I lived in New York, we went to... This place, it's Lockport Mall. It was a small little mall, and they always had Atlanta's Castle. So if my mom was getting her hair done, if my dad was shopping at one of the stores at Barnes and Noble or on Malden Books back then, I always got money from my parents or even my allowance, and went to Atlanta's Castle. Played Street Fighter Two, Mortal Kombat. Um, but not knowing what you know now, just time prices, just playing the game, You're just having fun, just having fun. The racing games. That's what mainly drawn drew me to the anime. It's just all the this, all the nostalgia. It that drew me into that as well, but I ended up loving it because of the story. The story yeah. that sucked me in so hard. I was like, oh, I cannot ignore this story anymore. The story I went into. I went in there for one reason, and then I ended up liking it for another reason. Mm -hmm. And uh, not giving away any spoilers, but we do recommend it. High score, high score, girl. Mm -hmm. It's it's a, it's a it's a coming of age tale. Yes, because because you, you see a lot of progression. Mm -hmm. 
but um, it's 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 it's, it's, it's charming, you know. And I wanted to talk to you about that because yes. when I saw you post it, I was like, oh, somebody somebody mm-hmm. watched it. And they got figures out for it too. They got statues out for it. That was that's when I knew you were into it. When you they posted pictures it, of the it, little figure, it was it was cool. They got they got the little figure of the little girl, the main character, one of the one of the main characters, characters yeah. of the story. That cliffhanger though at the end, that was kind of like, well, fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> can't talk about it. No, nope, can't talk about it. But, <laughs> it. but it's but it's it's kind of interesting how this how the story like high stakes how they actually put it. Mm-hmm. You actually get to see how they ran tournaments back then. You get to see the machines, how they were. You get to see a lot of neat things about the game that you never really quite used to. Like, mm-hmm. a lot of games that you don't really see anymore. Yeah. So, it's like... I mean, you know... One of the games I'm going to mention, Final Fight, you don't really see much of that. But it's in there. Anymore, but it is in the anime. Yeah. So, it's like... It's in there briefly for like a few minutes because it's part of the story. It is part of the story. But they implement it to where it's like the situation, like, and it kind of gives you little hints on how the personalities are. Definitely. Of certain, of certain characters. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, I want to talk to you about that. We really want to talk to you about that. Now, have you seen Bird Box? No, I have not. <laughs> I have not. It's a, it, it's a trip, but, uh, to kind of put to you simply, the whole point of Bird Box is you're not supposed to look outside. You look outside and you die. <laughs> That's the point of it. Interesting. But they don't know what it is, why it's doing it, or even if it's a creature. Now I know why. You, you never see it, but if you actually do get to see it, um, yes. Don't do it while you're eating. <laughs> Cause I did that. I did that. Like it's not. It's like let me put it this. It's not nasty mm-hmm. at all. But my wife made uh, taco soup, which is contained in like you know chili with mm-hmm. corn and you know basically stuff. Yeah. Know, like you eat. She like oh, there's much bread. I was like bread box. Okay, let's sit down. We serve serve our food. You know we're sitting in the couches playing the movie. And then shit just got real. And at the moment it got real, I was like, I'm not hungry anymore. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can, if my sister has watched it, and I understand why she's afraid of it, um, I probably shouldn't, I'm not going to tell the story why she would be afraid of the movie. Yeah. It's just something that happened to her when she was a kid. Damn. So, yeah. Did you got to climb to a fire? No, no. Okay, we'll, okay, okay, we'll stop it there. We'll, 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 we'll Stop it there. Well, you know, um, I do have to say, I do have to talk, like, one of the cool things that happened to me last year, besides my trip back from New York, um, I actually got to work at Comic-Con last year. I remember, year. and I think you bragged about it, you get it for free. Oh, it was so much fun. It was a lot of fun. Well, um, what, well, it was here, Houston? Yeah, it was here. It was, um... No, I can't remember the Comic Con. Um, it was Pandemic. I now I just yeah. remember. It was Pandemic Comic Con. I signed up for it. It was great. You pretty much get you get a wristband for free, and you pretty much you wear a wristband knowing that you're a volunteer and all that. And everybody is paying like buco bucks, like two hundred, hundred, two hundred bucks for these VIP passes. To go to go through a VIP line and be the first ones to go meet a celebrity, get an autograph, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. The great thing is, being a volunteer, you got treated like one of those VIPs. You know, I don't think you're. I don't think you need that treatment anymore. <laughs> it was. It was you're basically fun. exposing the business. Uh, you know, I got my fix. <laughs> it, it was fun. It was cool. Um, met Gaku Space from, of course, Assassin's Fist. Mm-hmm. Like Goki in it, he was cool, really nice guy. You know, he was actually excited that he was signing something from Assassin's Fist because you know he does one of the voices in um, Overwatch. Yeah, I think it's like the robot ninja or whatever he's called. You know, I think he was getting like a lot of Overwatch stuff, 
throughout the day and just seeing somebody come up with something other than that yeah. other Overwatch it was awesome met um seeing Michael Rosenbaum Tom Welling Jason David Frank the Green Power Ranger the Green Power Ranger they were great um Rosenbaum was awesome I got selfies with Rosenbaum it was cool um also met Jeffrey Dean Morgan kind of like my little sixth sense of humor I actually had him sign a Todd McFarlane Walking Dead Glenn figure <laughs> was it was it the one where he was uh, after or before he it, was, it was definitely before okay but before <laughs> but I tell you what Jeffrey Dean working kind of absolute kick out of it and he's actually he's actually like one of the most awesome people to meet is that's Negan, Negan, right? Yeah. Okay. Negan, the one that killed killed Glenn. Spoilers. Yeah, sorry if you if you haven't got that part of The Walking Dead. But um which I think most people in America have. Um but he basically his greets everybody like you've been friends with him for ever. Yeah, which is it's, really it's, great. it's cool because people wanna meet him. You know, you don't get, you know, there's, you know, some celebrities that just, meh, go along, you know, but pretty cool. And I'm hoping that Glenn shows up at Comic Palooza this year. So I'm actually going to buy a Negan figure for him to sign. Yeah. Just to kind of balance out the universe. That's cool. Are you going to volunteer for that one? Um, no, that's the one I was talking about going with a friend. So I'll probably right. be volunteering for Palooza this year. All right. Maybe next year. Well, that's cool. That sounds cool, man. <sighs> yeah, Blues are looking forward to. Man. You're gonna have fun this year. Oh, yeah. Have fun, like, you dick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> enjoy, your, enjoy your time, man. You actually deserve it. You've been, you've been putting in a lot of work. Mm-hmm. I, I basically had, technically, I had my fun last year at the very beginning. Yeah. So it was you like, like, yeah. And now that after that, I was like, you know what? After that, Doing stuff at home. Master was like, and you, evil. We got the house, mm-hmm. and then everything. Everything just kind of settled down a bit. And you definitely deserve that Evo Japan trip after missing the one in Vegas. To I missed three years. That's horrible. Three different occasions, all for different reasons. That's horrible. And and my wife did tell me the what was it? I think it was. The third time that we that we missed because the boy got married that same weekend, mm-hmm. and he didn't know it was Evo. Yeah, and I just I told him now I, I, like I'll be there. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. That was more important. Oh yeah, definitely. And then uh, we were watching Street Fighter Five the first time that they had it at Evo, and they uh, that's when they made the announcement of something great happening so we're waiting and my wife tells me you missed out on so many and there has to be one that's gonna pop up and then you're gonna we're gonna go you know you're gonna wanna go to that one there has to be something better mm-hmm. but up to the time evil had only been in the United mm-hmm. States Six. fucking not even an hour later they announced Evo Japan and I'm fucking I told my we're fucking going to that one mm-hmm. and we went and I was definitely jealous of that that y'all got to go to Japan. That's one of the places I would love to go. Well, it's definitely to be, Japan. To be honest, like just for like the cultural aspect, to I would say it's worth it to go. We had to do a lot of planning. We had to do. Oh a lot. yeah. So it's like it's one of those things where you have to commit on going. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So I pray one day you get to go over there, or hey, maybe if we plan another one, we'll probably ask. Probably have to go with us. I'd love to. That'd be awesome. But um, like, but the thing was, was that that was that thing. I'm like, I cannot miss this one. Mm-hmm. I want to be at the inaugural. Yeah. Definitely. Evo Japan. Definitely. And I actually get to scratch that off. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe I'll wear a cowboy hat and get interviewed like you did. Fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got, I got interviewed as soon as I got off the plane. Who just me? Oh, cowboy, cowboy, fuckin' <laughs> off. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was neat. Uh, I was not expecting that. I guess it's because like they have a show over there. And it's, 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 
This is funny. It was, it was, it was very hilarious. But uh, it's one of the best experiences I actually got to have. Julie got to go. Mm-hmm. One of my wife. We all got to experience something, something way out of our comfort zone. Oh yeah. You know, we actually did it. So it was, you know, feather in my wife's cap because she, she had never flown mm-hmm. in her life, and her first plane ride was a fourteen-hour flight. <laughs> oh boy! And she toughed it out. Mm-hmm. So now, like this past uh, this past Christmas, she flew to Utah with my mother-in-law. Four-hour flight, two-hour flight, I think two or four-hour flight. I think it maybe like not took it like nothing. It was nothing. Like, she's like, like her mom was like her mom never flown either, but mm-hmm. she's like you know not used to it. And your when your first flight's a fourteen-hour flight to a mine was overseas. Mine was a sixteen-hour flight. Four, my first one. Four hours ain't gonna mean anything. My very first one was a sixteen-hour flight, and that was when I went to Europe. Mm-hmm. And that was right after high school. And I never flown before prior. I have never, I haven't been anywhere overseas yet. Never? Never. Well, we gotta no. change that. The only thing, the only thing, the only country I've been to, which yeah. for, doesn't really count, is Canada. Canada counts as a country. I mean, you went over the, you went over the border, that counts. Oh, yeah, went over the border to Canada back in the day when. No passports were needed. Now this year to get, you know, this time in recent years now, to get into Canada, even over the bridge. Passports. Passports. You need them. But definitely find Niagara Falls is cool. Yeah, I recommend it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely recommend either in the summer or the winter. The winter is really cool, especially during Christmas time. You know, they got different colors. They have Christmas light shining on the falls. Red, green light shining on the falls. The trees are covered in ice and I swear the ice is so clear. It actually makes the trees look like they're made of crystal. Mm. The way they shine and sparkle is pretty cool. Like, like when we were over in, uh, in Tokyo, we got there, we knew it was going to be cold. Mm-hmm. We didn't know how cold it was going to be. Oh man, we got Oh so yeah, it, it, got cold it, it gets it, it gets cold. Yeah, it, it got it got so cold over there. That we're like we had like bubbled up the mm-hmm. the entire time. There had not been a time when we went outside and just in a t shirt. We were just literally maybe it was mm-hmm. one time I did walk around in a t shirt. That's because it was a store next door and I went there and came back. Yeah, but all the other places were like oh, yeah. cold, bubbled up. It gets pretty cold over there. We were uh, it snowed a little bit while we were there. Mm-hmm. It uh, was a lot of ice. We had a lot of snowball fights. <laughs> nice. We uh we basically like, I, there's I was putting together a video, but then my computer tried on me. I I cannot access it at the moment to this fix. I was making a like a video when we were in Tokyo, mm-hmm. and uh, so we're throwing ice in the river of ice <laughs> just to see if it would break. And nope, nope, it was cold. And uh, we were, we were, we were gonna do. We basically went to other restaurants, went to museums, Tokyo Tower, um, the arcades, of course. Oh, yeah, the the arcades, Tokyo Tower. Dude, Taito Station, legendary building over there. Mm-hmm. That's that's the mecca of the arcades right there. As far as like, like more commonly known, there are some underground ones, mm-hmm. but you really gotta know where they're at. Yeah, you, know, you, you have to look for them. But we basically. We were there for a little bit, and uh, I got my wife to play video games there because there were games that she liked, like the music games, mm-hmm. like instruments. And she's been wanting to have. She's like, I want to play those games again. Mm-hmm. I got her hooked. There is a tour that happens around the United States that there are the Japanese arcade games that come over. Mm-hmm. Nice. Like, but we have they haven't announced any tour dates yet for this year mm-hmm. so we're waiting on that and I want to take her to that at least if it's not here in Houston or in the Baytown area take her somewhere close to where she'd be able to experience it again oh, yeah. so it's be cool it's fun it'll be cool mm-hmm. um, so that's another plan but we're looking at it much later so I think that's about it we're, yeah, we're like about an hour and 30 minutes 
Uh, so we're gonna call this a podcast already. Yep. I will. I probably won't have it up till maybe tomorrow. I figure it out for work. I'll edit it, put everything together, and then uh, I don't know, post it. But uh, I will say thank you again, Todd, for coming over. No problem. Had fun. Any night, anytime. Fun. It was good to see your progress. To kick ass. Oh yeah, they they changed my hours at work, so I'm no longer working three to seven. I'm working nine to one now, so. Oh, it's better. So it's a little better. All right. Well, my schedule's filled up. Oh yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, school, and then. Friday, Saturday, Sunday work. So I am fucked. But you know what though. My wife did say, and you know, you're probably your probably parents have told you this too, like, it's gonna pay off. Eventually. Yeah. Eventually it's gonna pay off, and we have to keep our minds straight. Mm-hmm. Like, I needed this night to happen so I'll be able to see my friends again. Oh, yeah. So, like, when I, when I say thank you, I really do mean it. Oh, yeah. Because um, it's, it's gonna be a long road back. Mm-hmm. Which I can get the cords for my party and I'm thinking about getting an extra cord and second cord and a webcam to put on top of the TV. So you can stream? So we can stream. Alright. Definitely stream. Sounds good. Sounds like a plan. Alright guys, thank you again for listening. Appreciate you guys for sticking around with us. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Hopefully we get to do these a little bit more often, but uh, this this was kind of like a like I said, it was like a shoot off the hip. Oh, yeah. Because, uh, you know, we've been trying to hang out. Because we don't post a lot of footage of our fighting. We post mostly, like, podcasts and stuff. So, like I said, hopefully we can do more. Mm-hmm. Um, so, again, guys, thank you again for watching. Please take care of yourselves. Keep on fighting, fighters. See you later. See you.